Good Tuesday morning, my friends. We're here together again. I'm going to be reading some, again, of Aerith's birthday. Um, today, I just wanted to start out as a reminder, make sure that you are watching the video and then go into your Google Classroom and press turn in on the video. That way I can see who watched it and who hasn't had a chance to watch it. Also, I've appreciated your respectful comments on the different um, videos and assignments. Nice job, guys. I know that it's fun to chit chat. Um, I have a few ideas on some ways that we can connect um, on some videos. Maybe we'll do a flip grid so we can watch each other's flip grids. Um, but I'm kind of working on it. So give me some time and we'll get this all figured out, all this technology. Um, also, don't forget to be doing your math pages and practicing your multiplication facts. If you don't have flashcards, make some. Just cut up some pieces of paper, write the facts down, and you can use those to practice. That would be a huge help. Um, when we start school again. All right, Eris birthday, chapter 16, hunting. Now remember, Eris is a vegetarian. He only eats plants, so he's probably not gonna be too keen on hunting. Eris stared glumly over the snowy field, trying to decide what to do next. When Nimble popped out of the hole, I'm ready, she announced brightly. Ready for what? Don't you remember? You said hunting was my job. Is the den cleaned up? Oh, sure, Nimble assured him. Do you want to see? No. Okay, but if you want to teach me how to hunt, I'm ready to do it. Antelope uncles, Eris said. I told you, I don't know anything about hunting. I should be a good hunter, Nimble said. My mom was, and my father's really, really great. Aerith looked around. You have any idea when this father of yours is coming back? Nope, Nimble said earnestly. He just comes and goes. He's a very busy fox. Busy at what? Nimble's eyes narrowed. Are you suggesting he isn't busy? Aerith decided not to pursue the matter. Instead, he asked, where do you usually hunt? Right down along the bluff here. Mom always said we mustn't go too far. Should I go then? Nimble asked. Aerith was about to say yes when he thought about the human hunter's traps. I better go with you, he announced. Great, Nimble bounded off. Don't go so fast. Eris shouted after the fox as his short legs struggled to carry him through the snow over the rocks and around the boulders. Pausing, Nimble looked around and grinned to see how awkward Aerith was. After much panting and scowling, Aerith caught up with the young fox. Listen here, flea brain. Your legs are a lot longer than mine, so keep it down to a decent crawl. I will, but... She stopped speaking suddenly. What is it? Aerith asked. I smell something. What? Where? Right down there at the bottom, Nimble whispered. Aerith looked but could see nothing. The young fox made her way down the face of the bluff, pointing her nose now this way, now that, sniffing. Suddenly, she froze. With her belly low to the ground, she stretched out to her full length. Be careful, Aerith cautioned. Shh, Nimble replied. Tail stiff behind her, the young fox moved one step at a time, all but slithering toward whatever she had detected. Aerith, trying to keep his eye on the kit, but feeling more clumsy than ever, struggled hard to catch up, skidding and slippering over the rough terrain. Below, Nimble prepared to pounce. Suddenly, Aerith broke through the snow, only to strike a patch of rocks and boulders. His legs went out from beneath him. 
As he tried to right himself, he caused a small landslide. Rocks and snow cascaded past the fox. One rock popped into the air and came down in front of Nimble's nose. No sooner did the stone hit the snow than two jaws of steel rose up and snapped together, clamping onto a rock with a horrifying metallic clank. Don't move, Eris screamed. A baffled Nimble came up out of her crouch and stared at the object. What? What is it? She asked. Aerith's heart hammering shouted, It's a trap! Don't breathe! Don't think! Nimble leaned forward and sniffed. Didn't you hear me, you busted bottle of chicken clots? There may be other traps near you. Moving with great caution, Aerith inched toward the exposed trap his small black eyes looking this way and that. But what's a trap? Nimble asked. It's made by humans, Aerith said, struggling to get his breath back, to catch animals like you and me. It's what caught your mother. That's what killed her. Nimble's eyes grew very big. Oh, Here's a picture of the trap that she found. Aerith leaned forward toward the sprung trap. It had a hard oily reek that turned his stomach. When he thought of their walk last night from one den to the other and, nimble, and Nimble's pursue of the vole, it made him feel faint to realize how lucky they had been. Nimble came forward and sniffed at the trap again, but it smells like good food, she said, still baffled. That's the bait, Ara said, and there are 14 more of them. Oh, dear, Nimble said. In a small voice, she said, where? That's the point, Pug Pill. I don't know. Aerith was so upset he was shouting, but... Why are you angry at me? Nimble asked, backing away. I'm not angry at you, Ara screamed. I'm angry at the whole world. But does that mean we can't go anywhere? It means we have to be super careful. The snow makes everything worse. You can't see anything. You have to think. Get it? For once in your life, you're going to have to use your brindle bit of a baby brain. I'm not a baby. You're a child, Aerith raised, raged on. It's the same thing. And I'm not the one who has to take care of you. No, you don't. No. If I hadn't thrown that rock right there, you would have never seen that trap. You didn't throw it. You fell and rolled down. Nimble pointed out. It was another, 